In this video, we will cover the concept of camber and pre-stressing in steel bridge girders. We will also understand secondary stresses and unpre-stressed girders. To begin with, camber refers to upward curvature given in the beam or truss to counteract the deflection caused by the applied loads, while pre-stressing is the separate concept which takes care of secondary stresses. Please note that in RDSO standard drawings of open web girders, both are given that is camber as well as pre-stressing. In short, camber mitigates deflection and pre-stressing takes care of secondary stresses. We will understand the secondary stresses later. The processes of incorporating camber and pre-stressing are different. It is possible to have camber without incorporating pre-stressing. Such camber is normally called geometric camber, and such girders are called unpre-stressed girders. Camber can be introduced in open web girders by deliberately making some truss members shorter than nominal lengths and by making other members longer than nominal lengths. Nominal length means length of the member when bottom cord of open web girder is horizontal. The required camber value is decided based upon the deflection under the applied loads. Now let's understand process of pre-stressing. For assembling an open web girder, the members are fabricated as per cambered lengths. However, the gusset plates used for connecting these members together at a joint have holes as per nominal lengths of the members. This mismatch requires force fitting of the members so that holes in the members and gusset plates can be aligned together. This force fitting is achieved by inserting drifts and bolts forcefully, starting with the most aligned hole and doing the same to other holes. This process induces internal forces in the structure which effectively counteract secondary stresses. This is how pre-stressing is achieved. In contrast to this arrangement, let's imaging a situation where holes in gusset plates are also made as per cambered lengths of the members. In such a situation, there will be no need of force fitting and hence pre-stressing will not be introduced. Such girders will be called unpre-stressed girder. Now let's understand what are the secondary stresses that pre-stressing is supposed to counteract. Secondary stresses are outlined in Clause 3.3.1 of IRS Steel Bridge Code and are further divided into two parts. Part 1. While designing a truss-type girder, some assumptions are made. First assumption is that all members are straight and free to rotate at the joints, but actually the joints are rigid bolted or riveted connections, and members are not completely free to rotate at the joints. The second assumption is that all joints lie at the intersection of the centroidal axis of members. This is also not true because there are eccentricities in joints due to manufacturing and assembling tolerances. Third assumption is that all loads, including the weight of the members, are applied at the joints or nodes. This is also not true because loads such as self-weight and wind load, etc., are applied to the members directly and not on the node points. This induces some amount of bending in members, even though we assume that truss members are axially loaded in design. Part 2 includes the stresses which are the result of elastic deformation of the structure and the rigidity of the joints are known as deformation stresses. Both of above stresses combined together are collectively called secondary stresses. When we introduce pre-stressing in the girder, the secondary stresses need not to be considered separately in design forces. This is because pre-stressing takes care of the secondary stresses. However, in unpre-stressed girders, the secondary stresses needs to be considered separately in design. For consideration of these, either actual secondary stresses are calculated or in the absence of calculations, they are assumed to be 16.67% of dead load and live load stresses, including impact. To sum it up, RDSO standard open web girders have both camber as well as pre-stressing. Camber takes care of deflection, and pre-stressing takes care of secondary stresses. A girder which has only camber and not pre-stressing is called unpre-stressed girder. This was all about the concept of camber and pre-stressing in steel girders. Let us know in comment section any topic you want to cover. Subscribe for more such content.